Okay, now I'm going to show how to take a sample from a bearing surface uh, just using the uh, pickpocket device and then our grease thief filler. So I'm just going to use a little rod here to help me open the filler. And the filler comes with two parts. This is the sample cup area. This is the piston area. And so we'll use both of these parts along with a straw that has been uh, ready in this position. So you've got an open end of the piston, and then if I push that through the straw and put that flush, that's now the solid end of the piston. So with the solid end of the piston facing the cup, we just put that in there and it holds it in place. Now I'll put the piston down, use a spatula to take the grease from the bearing surface put it into the sample cup. So I've got some, some actual grease samples here that I've kind of redistributed on a bearing surface with different degrees of uh, consistency or firmness because in, in an actual situation you're going to have solids and you might have the grease drying out due to temperature or being worked or what have you. So we have to have, we have to be able to uh, take greases of varying consistency and be able to get that transferred. So this is just really uh, showing you know how that process works. So I'm going to try to get as much off of here as I can and hopefully it's a slight excess to the required sample volume. Got some of that in there. Now sometimes some gets caught in the spatula so you can even use the tip of the piston to kind of transfer the last bit. And the idea here is that it's a fairly efficient transfer, more than 90% of the volume of the grease that you take. We want that to be able to end up in our sample. So now I take the piston, put it into the sample cup area, engage that, and then I'll, I'll hold this so that you can see it. But normally, you could just put it down on, on the surface. But I'm going to start pressing on that piston. Uh, and you can see the little black piston inside the straw moving forward and we'll continue to transfer as much of that grease as we can, getting it close to full if possible. So now at this point, move the piston to the far end. I remove this, this can then be disposed. It's single use, we don't want to transfer materials from one uh, sample location to the other. And then I have this uh, small vial. I put piston side down into the vial it. Now that's ready for analysis. So what you have is a completely full section that's going to go into your furrow cue device, measure the furrow's content consistently. And by filling this straw and moving the piston to the far end, we would then consistently get the, the same amount uh, into that straw. And so the parts per million values of the ferrocube will accurately reflect the concentration in that sample. So I uh, just encourage you to, to look further into this and, and see this as a new method to be able to uh, prepare samples for uh, furrows testing with the ferrocube. Now one nice added feature here is that if we decide this sample for whatever reason, it could be due to the color, because this is a very dark sample, or it could be the results uh, of the furrow cube that tell us the furrow's content. Um, I can uh, then take the samples that, uh, that, uh, that I want to test further and uh, trans transfer them over. And so then I can take this and let's say I've got a grease thief and I want to do a full test sleep. I'll take that piston end at this end, put the open end into the grease thief, uh, pull the, pull the piston back in the grease thief and then use a rod to transfer that over. And so I'll just pull the straw out and it's going to completely fill the grease thief. So now at this point, move that piston, but I've really transferred that entire volume over to the grease thief. I'll just take my cap that on there and send that to the lab for analysis.